Hi friends, in this tutorial we'll see what is Spring Cloud Stream and how to use it to integrate a Spring Boot application with uh, RabbitMQ Message Broker. For this I'm going to take reference of my website javanews.com. So go to Spring, Spring Cloud section. The example that we are going to see today is Spring Cloud Stream uh, RabbitMQ Publish Message Example. I'll be sharing this URL along with the YouTube video. So in this tutorial we'll understand what is Spring Cloud Stream and its various terminologies and also will implement a simple example to publish a message to RabbitMQ broker using Spring Cloud Stream. Let us first have a look at what is the need of Spring Cloud Stream. So in previous examples we had already implemented examples for integrating Spring Boot applications with messaging systems like Apache Kafka and RabbitMQ. For this we had not used Spring Cloud Stream. Instead, Spring Boot itself uh, provides some uh, starter dependencies such as Spring Boot Starter AMQP using which we had integrated uh, our applications to message brokers like RabbitMQ. Similar to this Spring Boot Starter AMQP, we also have this uh, Spring Kafka dependency using which we can integrate applications to message brokers like Kafka. So what value does Spring Cloud Stream adds if we can already uh, uh, integrate Spring Boot applications to message brokers using these existing dependencies? If you'll have a look at this example where we have integrated Spring Boot with RabbitMQ messaging, uh, you will see that we had to write quite a bit of uh, configuration code uh, which is message uh, broker specific. For example, we had to create a bean of type AMQP template and then using this bean, we had to publish the message to RabbitMQ. Same was the case where we had integrated Spring Boot with Apache Kafka. We had to write uh, quite a bit of configuration code which was Apache Kafka specific. So uh, in this scenario, if tomorrow, suppose in this example, we have to use, make use of uh, Apache Kafka instead of RabbitMQ. Well, this will uh, require application code level changes also. With Spring Cloud Stream, this is not the case. What Spring Cloud Stream does is that it provides us an abstraction over the queues, which uh, this abstraction, it is known as channels. We'll see what are channels. So in Spring Cloud Stream, uh, at the code level, we only have channels and this channel it can be any uh, message broker that is uh, supported by Spring Cloud Stream such as RabbitMQ or Kafka. So at the code level we will not have to make any changes. So this is one important advantage of Spring Cloud Stream. The other important advantage is that we don't have to write any configuration uh, code for integrating the application with uh, the message broker. This all is taken by the Spring Cloud Stream. So we have the Spring Cloud Stream binder. Uh, the binder it creates uh, all the uh, config, uh, configuration code that is required for binding the Spring Boot application uh, to the message broker. So we'll see how it is done next. So using Spring Cloud Stream we can develop applications where we do not need to specify the implementation details of the messaging system uh, we want to use. We just need to specify the required binding dependencies and the Spring Cloud Stream will integrate the messaging systems to the Spring Boot application. So this is the Spring Cloud Stream uh, uh, high level architecture. So here we can see that uh, these are the inputs and outputs. These are the channels actually that I was speaking of. Their abstraction over the uh, uh, queues that we, uh, we use. Uh, this is the binder. Uh, the binder, this is the integration code uh, that is required to integrate the Spring uh, Cloud application uh, to the uh, message brokers. So this is automatically created by the Spring Cloud Stream. And this is the RabbitMQ middleware that we'll be integrating to. So we'll be creating this Spring Cloud uh, Stream application now. Let us first have a look at the Spring Cloud concepts. So first we have here uh, binder. So depending on the messaging system, we'll specify a messaging platform dependency, which in our case is RabbitMQ. So we'll have to specify this dependency, Spring Cloud Starter Stream uh, Rabbit dependency. Uh, what this will does is that it will automatically create this. Uh, uh, configuration code that is the binder code that is required uh, to integrate our application with RabbitMQ. Next we have here the source. So whenever a message it needs to be published uh, in Spring Cloud Stream this is done using a source. A source is an interface having a method annotated with output. So uh, for example this is the source that we are defined in a code. It is an interface and here it is having a method annotated with output and uh, if, along with the output tag we specify the channel name to which uh, this uh, message uh, will need to be published. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, see how this is done in the example. Next we have the channel. A channel it represents an output and uh, input pipe between the Spring Cloud Stream application and the middleware platform. Uh, 
uh, as told previously it is an abstraction over the queue so in the in our case it will be an abstraction this employee registration channel it will be an abstraction over the uh, rabbit mq exchanges uh, so we'll specify uh, in a code uh, and uh, associate this uh, channel with a rabbit mq exchange we'll see how this is done so let's begin the implementation part so this is the spring cloud stream application that we are going to develop uh, we'll be exposing a rest endpoint uh, and uh, once uh, a request comes to this controller uh, the uh, source uh, will be called and the message then will be published to the rabbitmq queue using the output channel this will be the maven project that we'll be creating so go to eclipse and create a new maven project Group ID give it as com dot java news. Artifact ID write it as cloud stream producer or publisher. Next we'll be adding the dependencies. So we'll be uh, adding the binder dependencies for RabbitMQ. So this is the dependency Spring Cloud Starter Stream RabbitMQ that uh, we'll need to add. Also, since we are exposing a REST endpoint and creating a web application, we'll also need the Spring Boot Starter web uh, dependency. So, copy this. Next, we'll be creating a Spring Boot Bootstrap class with the Spring Boot uh, an application annotation. So, let's create this class. Next, we'll be creating the model class employee. So, uh, we'll be publishing uh, a message of the object employee to RabbitMQ. So, before that, we'll serialize it to JSON and then uh, send it to uh, RabbitMQ. So, for this, we'll be using the JSON ignore properties tag. So, let's create this class. Next, we'll define the source class. So, as told previously, this is used for expo for publishing the message uh, to RabbitMQ. So, uh, this will simply be an interface that defines the ways of obtaining the message channel object needed to send the message. So, here this is the message channel uh, to which we are going to send the object. Uh, here we define the output channel named as employee registration channel. So, let's create this source class. Next, we define a simple controller that will make use of the above defined classes to publish the message upon receiving the employee registration request. So, also here we use the enable binding annotation that tells Spring Cloud Stream that we want to bind the controller to a message broker. So, here we are specifying the enable binding tag along with the source class that we defined above. Also, we auto wire the source class uh, in this controller and then uh, we use it to publish the message to the RabbitMQ uh, queue or the output channel that we have defined in the source classes. So here we are uh, doing employee registration source dot employee registration. So this is the method uh, which will give us the channel and uh, we are doing a dot send and in this we are uh, serializing the message and sending it uh, to the RabbitMQ queue. So let's create this controller class. Uh, 
so finally we are done with all the code changes uh, we now just have to define the properties so here we first specify the rabbitmq properties that is the host port username and password all these are the default rabbitmq properties also we associate the output channel uh, that we named as employee registration channel uh, to a rabbitmq exchange so this will be the exchange that will be created in rabbitmq so currently the message uh, will just go to an exchange and be stored there in the next uh, chapter what we are going to do is uh, using spring uh, spring cloud stream we are going to uh, create a consumer so there will be creating the queues and associating it with the uh, employee registrations uh, exchange that uh, will be having the message so currently we'll just leave the messages in the exchange only the rabbit mq exchange uh, also here we specify the spring cloud stream default content type which is uh, a json in our case let's create these properties so go to source main resources other we'll be creating a file named as application dot properties so in one of the previous tutorial i had explained getting started with rabbit mq in this tutorial uh, we had seen how to install rabbit mq and how to start uh, rabbit mq application so you can go through this example if you have not still installed uh, rabbit mq so i have already installed rabbit mq so i'll be starting it so go to the rabbit mq command prompt and go to where you have installed it use this command rabbitmq server start so these are the existing exchanges we don't have the exchange named as employee registration exchange next we'll be starting the application so right click on this and do run as java application Our application it has started successfully next uh, the controller we have defined uh, we have defined an endpoint so we are going to send a request of type employee to this uh, controller which will then uh, send the employee message to the rabbit mq exchange so let's create this uh, message that we have to call as we are sending a post request uh, i'm going to make use of the postman application so this is the json message that we are going to send if you look at the domain class uh, uh, here employee we are having two fields employee name and employee id so these two fields uh, and their values we have specified in json uh, the type is raw and we are specifying that this is json data uh, and also this is a post request and this is the url slash register that uh, we have specified here in the controller so do a send and you, you are getting the message employee registered so now we'll go to the exchange here we are seeing that uh, the exchange employee registrations uh, has got created and if you'll see here it has just got a single message here if you'll see here uh, in this graph currently let this message be in the uh, exchange itself in the next tutorial we are going to create a spring cloud stream application to uh, consume a message from the uh, rabbit mq so there we'll be associating a queue to this uh, employee registrations exchange and then consuming the message uh, which will then be consumed by the application spring boot application that uh, we will be creating hope you have understood this tutorial uh, we in the next tutorial we'll be seeing how to bind this exchange to the queue and consume this rabbit mq message using spring cloud stream so this is the next tutorial that we are going to see uh, the source code for this tutorial you can download it from here thank you